I'm Luke Langelier from SNS Diesel Motorsport. Wanted to do a quick video rundown on some differences between the two most widely used diesel high pressure pumps, uh, especially in the North American truck market. Uh, the CP4, uh, which is replacing the CP3 in most applications on the newer vehicles, um, and the CP3, this is just the uh, base pump bodies here. Obviously there's a lot of parts missing, but this would be the easiest for um, showing some of the design differences, uh, some pros and cons of each of each design. The CP3 is what has been in use since 2001 with the LB7 Duramax up through the LMM. Um, the LML went with the CP4 base pump uh, and uh, the Cummins up through 2019 anyways has used a variant of the CP3 um, the 6.7 liter power stroke forward platform uh, uses a CP4 variant of high pressure pump as well. So there's more and more of these CP4s out there. There's more and more people um, experiencing the CP4, unfortunately, in some cases, which is uh, not, not giving them uh, good reliability. Um, they can be a reliable pump, but they're definitely very sensitive to um, things that the CP3 has not had issues with as far as... Um, you know, being so uh, sensitive to bottom end failures uh, and fuel contamination and things like that. So, start with the CP4 here. Um, advantage of it is primarily from a manufacturing perspective, it is a aluminum body, much more modular design, has two pumping elements um, with heads and delivery valves um, that bolt on like that. So, there's only two. Um, of them to machine and two sets of parts. Um, it's much lighter, um, certainly has got to be easier to machine and manufacture. Um, the pumping element itself is very similar to the CP3 in general. There's a spring um, and a, a DLC coated, very, very tight clearance, tight tolerance um, pumping element um, that uh, that works just like in the CP3 design where it takes fuel in up through a passage in the head, compresses it, and um, pumps it out to the high pressure line to the rail um, and to the injectors. Um, so a uh, key difference on the CP4 is it actually has a very aggressive two lobe cam and a roller, which is what rides on the cam and actually um, actuates the plunging, plunger pumping element. So this roller is direct metal to metal contact with this cam. And uh, that's okay in a perfect world if there is uh, no fuel starvation issues, fuel temperature variations, uh, contamination, water, um, viscosity stuff issues stuff like that um, that that roller and cam ride like this so this thing sees full full speed of this cam uh, directly metal to metal on that roller as that is uh, pumping up and down so the downside to that this is a pump actually the first pump I took apart to use for this demonstration was a failed CP4 and this is the cam that came out of that pump. Um, the problem being that oftentimes, uh, almost always when CP4s fail, it is a bottom end failure because of this design. The top end is, um, is really doesn't have much problems in our experience. Um, that actually is the pumping element. It is the bottom end in the cam box um, that has the problems. So in this case, you can see this cam. Here's a cam in good condition. Here is the failed cam. You can see it basically, this one actually isn't even too far along at the failure. Um, it basically stopped the engine before it progressed too far. Um, but it removes uh, metal, small metal debris pieces from the cam and then sends it through the rest of the fuel system. You can see here this roller stopped rolling. Here is a good one. Here is one of the two failed ones. It's got a flat spot on it. And that's what is very common to see where this will actually seize up because it's metal to metal on both the bottom side and, and the top side. So very, 
everything's got to be just right for that to not have problems. And that can seize, and then you just have a scuffing. It's not even rolling anymore, it's just straight sliding metal to metal. That plucks a lot of material off of both sides and sends it through the rest of the pump. The other issue, as you can see on the microscope, this is the other roller out of that one, and it seized up. And actually the main issue with that, as I found it, was these are also not guided in all applications that actually keeps them from rotating. So the problem with this one, and also can happen quite regularly, is that this thing can lose contact and can actually rotate. And when that rotates, then you don't have any uh, rolling of this piece here anymore. You just have straight metal to metal, um, just trying to dig a hole through that cam. <clears throat> so the bottom ends fail, which is bad, and worse yet is that the fuel goes from the cam box then through a drilling in the pump body straight up to the metering unit or FCA um, and that then feeds fuel to the to the actual pumping heads um, and then to the rail and injectors so the telltale sign when guys suspect a CP4 failure is you pull the metering unit off and look to see if there's any melted debris on that screen because straight out of this cam box where all the debris is generated it feeds the side of this metering unit and then straight to the plungers and then to your injectors. There is a screen on these metering units, but that screen does not catch all the debris and it's not enough to actually save any of the rest of the high pressure fuel system. So when guys check that, that is because the failure was a bottom end failure that then feeds into the rest of everything. So unfortunately that means that that metal debris gets into the rails, your high pressure lines, your injectors, uh, even your return lines on the p 8 injectors is critical. Um, from a, there's a pressure regulator in the back of that and it basically contaminates the whole system and you have to replace everything. And it is very important to, if you do have a CP4 failure, it's very important to replace everything. You, some people can clean, uh, if you do a very, very good job, thorough job of cleaning the rails, cleaning the lines, they could be reused, but it's recommended to just replace everything. We've had multiple cases where customers have bought new injectors after a CP4 failure, thought they cleaned everything out good enough, and then turns out they didn't, and then the new set of injectors gets ruined because they ingest more debris from that failure of the previous pump. The CP3, on the other hand, is a much heavier pump, just physically much, much heavier pump. Forged body, um, three pumping elements instead of two, and um, primary difference in the bottom end. Instead of a roller, like the CP4 has, it has this, what's called a bucket, basically, and a nice big foot pad. And instead of a two-lobe cam with an aggressive ramp rate, it has an eccentric on the cam and a polygon that's a separate piece with a, with a big um, a wide bushing that spreads the load out. And so as the cam spins, that polygon doesn't actually rotate. It just moves up and down. So instead of cam to roller direct speed, you basically get a bucket from the uh, CP3, which has the plunger, which is similar to the CP4, and instead of it sliding, it actually just basically stays almost static and goes up and down, up and down. You get just a little bit of side-to-side -side motion, but that side-to-side -side motion is a big pad, a big footprint here, and a DLC-coated polygon, and that is very, very robust, stout bottom end that just is very rare to have uh, failures um, of that unless there's contamination issues or some sort of you know um, outside source but basically that just sits there and goes up and down so it's, it's pretty tough to actually hurt a CP3. Other key difference is the cam box on the CP3 does not directly feed the metering unit and the rest of the high pressure system downstream like the CP4 does so even if a CP3 bottom end did fail, which is not very common, uh, it's very unlikely uh, uh, or almost impossible for it to contaminate the high pressure fuel system 
um, unless your filtration in the truck, which it would go back through, is insufficient. So um, many OEMs are going to the CP4 pump, um, likely due to cost and weight and things like that. Um, but that is, uh, like I say, in a perfect world, they can be okay, but there's definitely much, much higher failure rates of these, and it's a very, very expensive uh, failure and repair because of the effect that it has on the rest of your system. So um, due to that, we continue to develop products that help to address those issues uh, for the customers to either get a more reliable, more robust pump in the system or change the way that the pump fluid flow uh, travels to not contaminate the rest of the high pressure system if and when the CP4 fails. So thanks for listening. If you got any questions, comments, feel free to, uh, to post them and uh, we'll get them answered as uh, quick as we can. Uh, hopefully that helps to explain and clear up uh, any confusion on some of the differences between these two very, very widely used and popular pumps. Thanks.